Morning, Nelson. Thank you for joining the Boston Zoning Commission public hearing, which is being held virtually to ensure the continued safety of the public, staff members, and the Boston Zoning Commissioners. The open meeting law requires I notify the public that this virtual meeting is being recorded. Please be advised that an audio and video recording of this meeting is being made. At this time, I'd like to uh, take a little time to have the interpreters introduce themselves. Thanks, Jay. We'll go New, then Carla, then Jardine. Thank you, Cyrus. Morning, everyone. My name's New. I will be your Vietnamese interpreter for this morning meeting. Uh, xin chào mọi người. Thì tôi sẽ hỗ trợ không dịch sang tiếng Việt cho mọi người vào cuộc họp sáng hôm nay. Thì trong cuộc họp sáng hôm nay, để mà uh, được hỗ trợ sang tiếng Việt, thì mọi người vui lòng chọn hình quả địa cầu ở bên dưới màn hình và chúng ta chọn ngôn ngữ uh, tiếng Việt. Nhưng mà tại vì chúng ta không có ngôn ngữ tiếng Việt, thì quý vị vui lòng chọn ngôn ngữ là uh, Japanese là để được nghe hỗ trợ sang uh, ngôn ngữ tiếng Việt. À. Xin cảm ơn mọi người. Một lần nữa là xin mọi người chọn ngôn ngữ uh, tiếng Nhật tại vì chúng ta không có ngôn ngữ tiếng Việt để mà nghe tiếng Việt. Xin cảm ơn. Thank you. Thank you, New. Who's next, Cyrus? Carla, over to you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla. I'm the Spanish interpreter. Muy buenos días a todos. Mi nombre es Carla Rivera. Yo soy la intérprete hispana. En este día vamos a tener el servicio de interpretación. Eh, pronto vamos a estar dando las instrucciones de cómo usted se puede conectar para poder escuchar toda esta reunión en español. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Bon, good morning, everyone. My name is Jardine, and I'm your Haitian Creole interpreter. Bonsoir. Bonjour, tout le monde. Nom c'est Jardine. Este moi même qui a interprété pour nous en Creole haitien pour une heure matin. Si vous avez besoin d'interprétation, les et, et documents sont sortis, vous êtes capable de peser sur créer l'Aïtien pour l'interprétation. Merci. Thank you, Jody. Is that it, Cyrus? That's it, and the interpretation rooms are now open. Okay, thank you. At this okay. point, I'll take, I'm going to take a roll call of zoning commissioners. Jill Hatton? Present. Michael Nichols? Present. Michael Demella? Present. Nelson Arroyo. Nelson Arroyo. David Ma. President, sorry about that. I was on mute. I'm here, Jay, as well. This is David Ma. David Ma is here. Aisha Miller. You there, Aisha? Ricardo Ostrich. Ricardo just put in the chat that he had to leave and he's coming back in to fix the tech issue. Thank you. And Jay Hurley, I'm a, are you sure you're there? All right, we have, we have we can start the meeting with six. I'll, uh, I'll know when the uh, Aisha and Ricardo come on. Uh, this is a Nine o'clock public hearing. This is a hearing before the Boston Zoning Commission to consider a petition for the approval of map amendment number 770 and a petition for approval of the planned development area number 147, the Mary Ellen McCormick phase one development, re redevelopment. The hearing was duly advertised December 21st, 2023 in the Boston Herald. In the Boston Zoning Commission hearing on petitions, the proponents will first present their case in a subject to questioning by members of the commission only. We are taking support and opposition at the same time. If you're planning to testify, please take the time to verify that your computer microphone is active. Click the hand icon on your Zoom control panel. This will signal staff you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, your hand icon will be blue. If you're calling into the meeting and would like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for public testimony, a member of the staff will announce your name and allow you to speak. You must unmute your microphone and your webcam will not be active. Please give your full name, any group affiliation, and announce whether you support or oppose the petition. Each speaker will be allowed up to two minutes. If necessary, I'll advise you when you have 30 seconds remaining. At that time, please summarize your remarks so the meeting can continue and others may be heard. Finally, the proponents are allowed a brief five to 10 minute period for rebuttal if they so desire. Please begin the presentation. Thank you and good morning, Chairman and members of the board. My name is Camille Platt. I am a project manager with the BPDA on the Mary Ellen McCormick redevelopment. 
um, project in South Boston. Uh, this project consists of the phased redevelopment of the northernmost 18 acres of the 31 acre McCormick development into a mixed use, mixed income community. The remaining approximately 13 acres of, of the McCormick development will be redeveloped under a separate plan development area development plan as part of a future second phase. The project will comprise eight new buildings, the substantial renovation of an existing structure, and will also include up to 1,440,000 square feet of closed floor area of residential, retail, community, and open space uses. Approximately 13% of the project site, which is about 2.48 acres, will include publicly accessible open space, which will be provided in a variety of configurations, um, including both active and passive areas. The project notification form was filed with the BPDA on October 29th of 2021. Since then, two impact advisory group meetings were held as well as one public meeting. These virtual meetings were well attended and duly advertised in the local newspapers, as well as circulated to our South Boston community email list. The project was then approved by our BPDA board on December 14th of 2023. I will now hand it over to my colleagues in planning and the development team to begin the presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Camille. Thank you, Camille. My name is Ted Schwartzberg. I'm with the BPDA's planning department. Next slide, please. I'm here to give two slides on uh, the planning and zoning context that inform the BPDA staff review of this proposal. Uh, for the zoning, uh, the underlying zoning is H1, but uh, PDA 147 will supersede that use and dimensional guidelines uh, pending uh, today's review. Uh, also, this site lies within the Coastal Flood Resilience Overlay District. In terms of planning context that staff used, uh, this is adjacent to the Mokley Park uh, and Mokley Park vision plan was uh, part of the review process as well as a citywide housing Boston plan. Uh, we also consider complete streets and bike parking guidelines. Next slide, please. Uh, for uh, phase one, uh, the zoning uh, will be determined by the BPD, by the uh, PDA that will be discussed by the proponent in subsequent slides. Uh, but uh, in terms of the uh, sea fraud overlay, this does comply with uh, flood resilience, flood, flood resi resiliency design requirements. Um, this is consistent with uh, the vision plan for Mokley Park. Uh, and of course, with the city's housing uh, citywide plan, uh, the design meets complete streets guidelines and then also is compliant with the city's bike parking guidelines. And that's all from the planning department. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. Good morning. My name is Drew Colbert. Uh, work for wind development and have been partners with the Boston Housing Authority and the Mary Ellen McCormick Tenant Task Force uh, since 2017 in planning uh, the extensive redevelopment effort here. Next slide. The existing site um, consists of approximately 18 acres on the northernmost portion of the Mary Ellen McCormick public housing community located in South Boston between the Andrews Square and UMass JFK Red Line stops. Uh, the project area is bounded by Divine Way to the north, uh, O'Connor Way to the west, uh, Old Colony and Moakley Park to the east, um, and uh, the future phase two development uh, to the south. Um, the existing community um, in its entirety consists of 1,016 deeply affordable public housing units uh, that were constructed between 1936 and 1938. Next slide. Our phase one project uh, will uh, redevelop the, the northernmost portion, as you can see here. Um, the site mainly consists of two, three, and four-story uh, walk-up um, brick apartment buildings. Next slide. Um, while the site has uh, great access uh, to mass transit, um, and community amenities uh, such as Mokley Park and Carson Beach. Um, it often faces uh, infrastructure as a significant barrier, um, such as Old Colony Ave, uh, as well as um, a street grid that doesn't align uh, to the surrounding neighborhood. Um, not only isolating this community um, economically uh, due to its 100% affordability, uh, but also geographically. Next slide. 
Here's additional context of the existing community as it exists today. Um, the streets uh, that bisect the site um, are securitous and again, do not connect uh, to existing city streets, um, both north and west of this community, um, leading to that isolation. Uh, the streets are also uh, too narrow um, for many uh, public safety vehicles and school buses uh, to, to bisect the community. Um, and as uh, Ted mentioned, uh, our project is going to be redeveloping that street grid um, in meeting Boston Complete Street Standards. Next slide. Throughout the course of the development, we will seek uh, to maximize some of the great existing assets of the community, one of which is its mature tree canopy uh, with the street trees that were planted in the 1930s, uh, you know, now upwards of 80 plus years in age. Um, our streets, open spaces, and buildings were designed to maximize the preservation of this tree canopy. Next slide. So the proposed PDA, um, again, consists of the northernmost 18 acres on site. Uh, the development will create eight uh, residential buildings, as well as one community center, which is the historic adaptive reuse of an existing um, and abandoned coal-fired uh, steam plant. Uh, the total GFA uh, for this PDA is 1,440,000 uh, square feet, of which uh, 1,381,000 will be dedicated uh, towards mixed income residential uses, creating 1,310 residential units, of which 529 uh, will be uh, BHA deeply affordable replacement units. Uh, the project will also be creating uh, ancillary neighborhood scale retail on the ground floors of approximately 33,000 square feet, and then that community center of approximately 26,000 square feet. There are three distinct public open spaces um, located throughout uh, the phase one project, um, notably uh, the Veterans Park um, at the corner of Logan and Mohawk Street, uh, the community green um, adjacent to the community center, in Town Square um, at the entrance to the community across from Milky Park. Uh, these open spaces um, will total approximately 2.5 acres. Um, in addition, there'll be uh, further streetscape improvements of 3.7 acres. Um, in all of the residential buildings, um, at minimum 20% of the units will be BHA replacement affordable units. Next slide. Those open spaces that you can see here uh, vary in size and location. Um, some are uh, ground floor resident amenity courtyards, others are elevated courtyards on roof decks. Um, the distinct open spaces you can see here um, include the Veterans Memorial, uh, the town square and the community green uh, with a variety of passive and active recreation opportunities uh, for residents of this community and uh, the public. Um, in addition, we're creating pocket parks um, in areas uh, for residents in the community to gather, um, as well as a public dog park. Next slide. Working with the residents, um, we have sought to increase uh, the variety of uses um, and activate the ground floors in this new development uh, to enhance safety and security of the residents that live in this community, as well as the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, we sought to do this um, by having vibrant and active ground floors uh, with neighborhood scale retail, um, as I described in red, uh, community uses in orange, uh, ground floor residential amenities um, in a lighter orange, and then uh, direct entry and ground floor residential units in yellow. Next slide. The community center, as I described, uh, 
is going to be the repurposed uh, former coal-fired steam plant that used to heat this 30-acre site. Um, it will be transformed uh, into the Billy McGonigal Community Center named after the late BHA administrator and resident, uh, former resident of Mary L. McCormick. Um, this center uh, will provide tools and resources for residents um, from one of the city's poorest communities, uh, as well as their neighbors, to develop the necessary skills to enter or grow in the workforce, contribute to the economy, and build wealth. Um, wind development, working with nonprofit partners from South Boston across the, and across the city, um, will be hosting hundreds of hours of programming uh, focused on workforce training, job placement, continuing education, as well as programs for children, seniors, and more. Um, in the foreground of the community center, you can see uh, the community green, which is one of our vibrant public open spaces. Next slide. The PDA area uh, from the 3D massing is shown here uh, with those eight residential buildings uh, and the community center, as well as the getting a little background. Um, the buildings are a variety of typology, height, and size uh, to reflect um, not only the surrounding neighborhood context of Andrew Square in South Boston, uh, but also provide uh, the necessary uh, density and scale um, needed uh, to rebuild all affordable public housing units um, in a mixed income nature. Next slide. The first three buildings, um, all of which have received uh, BCDC approval um, to be constructed, uh, will begin with building A, uh, located in the upper right-hand corner of the site, uh, closest to Andrew Square. Uh, building A consists of 94 all-affordable BHA replacement units. It will serve as a relocation resource, maximizing the number of one-way moves for existing residents from their current unit into a new, deeply affordable unit. This will limit uh, the number of households that need to be temporarily relocated off-site um, while their new unit is constructed. Building A, again, consists of 94 units um, and is a uh, six-story building. Next slide. Following the completion of Building A, we'll begin construction on Buildings B1, B2, as well as C1 and C2. B1 and B2 uh, front Old Colony Ave, closest to Preble Circle and across the street from Moakley Park. Uh, this, these two buildings uh, consist of 300 units, 20% will be affordable BHA replacement units as well as ground floor retail. Next slide. Built at the same time as B1, B2 are the C1 and C2 buildings. Um, C1 will again serve as a critical relocation resource, uh, creating 172 units of 100% uh, affordable BHA replacement units, um, all of which will be available to households 62 and older. Um, over 40% of the existing community uh, is over the age of 62 and that population needs um, critical on-site uh, services dedicated uh, to seniors, uh, which we'll be providing in this specific building. Again, maximizing the ability for those existing residents to move from their current unit into a new unit with uh, critical on-site services. Um, adjacent to the C1 building um, is C2, which is a, a row house, townhouse type building, uh, very similar to the uh, triple decker typology found throughout South Boston and uh, many Boston neighborhoods. Uh, this building uh, consists of 20 mixed income units, uh, of which 20% are affordable BHA replacement. Next slide. 
And that concludes my presentation uh, this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to present on this uh, critical PDA, um, allowing us to create uh, a vibrant mixed income neighborhood while replacing um, critically needed uh, affordable housing units on uh, an existing public housing community. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Can we take the presentation down now? Um... Any uh, questions, comments from the commission? Nobody? Any uh, public testimony? Uh, if anybody would like to testify, please indicate by raising your hand, please. Right, we have at least one. John, go ahead and unmute yourself. I'm not gonna to try to pronounce your last name. Good morning. My name is John Pikatowski, lifelong resident of South Boston, board member of the Andrew Square Civic Association. I live not more than 500 feet from this development. And thinking back, when the RFPs went out in 2017, being knowledgeable in the development and the construction and whatnot, I was concerned who would get the rights to develop, redevelop this property. The wind companies have far exceeded what I had ever hoped for. They've been more than the developer in the neighborhood, they've been a partner in the neighborhood. As you've seen in the slides, the Billy McGonagall Community Center I was at that event, the dedication event. Uh, I videoed it for a hobby I do, South Boston Beat. I met with uh, Gilbert Wynn at the event. It was a great time, but would say in that, they're just an awesome partner in the community. They met with the civic associations in the area. They worked hand in hand with Mary Ellen McCormick Task Force, as well as Andrew Square Civic. I always come across in development meetings looking at infrastructure, whether it be roadways, electrical utilities, et cetera. They've addressed all of my concerns as well as others that were raised in various meetings that they've met with several different times with the ASCA, I know. And as I said, they've lived with uh, Carol Sullivan, Mary Ellen McCormick Task Force. This is a- seconds, John. Terrific. This is a project, a good project that ticks all the boxes in a positive way. Thank you again, uh, Zoning Board Commission and the wind companies. Thank you, John. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Jeff. This, at this point, we'll close out this portion of the hearing and we'll enter our business session. Questions, comments, motions? I, I would just comment, Mr. Chair, that I thought the presentation was very, very good. Um, but the sequencing of this is is clearly um, a result of a lot of discussion and thought and um, the ability to accomplish a very complicated redevelopment here in this first component phase. I think the PDA is a great tool to, to uh, provide and facilitate that. Um, and unless there's other comments, I would make a motion that we approve map amendment application number 770, development plan for plan development area number 147, Mary Ellen McCormick phase one redevelopment map for South Boston. Second. 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 Motion is second. Any discussion on the motion? Having none, we'll vote a roll call. Jill Hatton? Yes. Michael Nichols? Yes. Michael DeMella? Yes. Nelson Arroyo? Yes. David Ma? Yes. Aisha Miller? She's still not on, Jim. No, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Ricardo Ostrich? Yes. And I vote yes. That's 7 0. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much.
to go to our nine fifteen herring now. This is a hearing before the Boston Zoning Commission to consider a petition for the approval of map amendment application number 769 and a, and a petition for approval of the master plan for plan development area number 146, Columbia Point Crossing. The hearing was duly advertised on December 21st, 2023 in the Boston Herald. In the Boston Zoning Commission hearing on petitions, the proponent will first present their case and subject to questioning by members of the commission only. We are taking support and opposition at the same time. If you're planning to testify, please take the time to verify your computer microphone is active. Click the hand icon in your Zoom control panel. This will signal staff that you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, your hand icon will be blue. If you're calling into the meeting and would like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for public testimony, a member of the staff will announce your name and allow you to speak. You must unmute your microphone. Your webcam will not be active. Please give your full name any group affiliation announce whether you support or oppose the petition. Each speaker will be allowed up to two minutes. If necessary, I'll advise you when you have 30 seconds remaining. At that time, please summarize your remarks so the meeting can continue and others may be heard. Finally, the proponents are allowed a brief five to 10 minute period for rebuttal if they so desire. Please begin the presentation. Good morning and thank you, Commissioner Hurley and members of the Zoning Commission. Morning. I'm here before you to present Oops, excuse me, that uh, I'm here before you to present the master plan for plan development area number 146, 35 to 75 Morrissey Boulevard, also known as Columbia Point Crossing. Located in Dorchester on Morrissey Boulevard, the project encompasses approximately nine acres of land that is currently occupied by a variety of commercial buildings, including a super supermarket and the record company. The proposal contemplates the development of seven new buildings, open space and road networks. Three of the proposed buildings are proposed as residential buildings with a commitment to 20% IDP. The project will contain an estimated 117 affordable units and 585 units total. The remaining four buildings are currently envisioned as commercial life science buildings. The project will provide an activated ground floor with retail and community uses throughout. Importantly, the grocery store currently at the location will have a new space in the future development as well. The project will also create a new road network on the site and several new open spaces, including a large family park, which will be protected in perpetuity. In addition to the work being done at the site, the project will bring a number of important contributions to the neighborhood, including a contribution of up to $4,600,000 to the Transportation Mitigation Bank established by the recently approved Dorchester Bay City for improvements to area transportation infrastructure, including Morrissey Boulevard, Kosciuszko Circle and JFK UMass Station. The project will also make a donation of a dollar per square foot of residential usage for the upkeep and maintenance of Moakley Park. $750,000 will also be provided to the Dorchester Bay Economic Development Corporation for community development and $250,000 will be provided to the city to assist independent small local businesses in the Dorchester area with technical assistance, storefront improvements, neighborhood commercial street beautification and affordable commercial space, including but not limited to the Dorchester Avenue commercial corridor in the Columbia Savin Hill neighborhood of Dorchester. The project will also provide approximately 7,450 square feet of ground floor community space that will be programmed in collaboration with the city throughout the Article ADP process. I'll now have Ted Schwartzberg take you through the planning context before the development team leads you through the presentation. Thanks, Nick. Ted? Thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I'll run through three slides to talk about the zoning and planning context that guided BPDA staff review of this proposal. Uh, this site is located in the Dorchester neighborhood district, which is governed by the community commercial subdistrict in Article 65. It's located in the coastal flood resilience overlay, the green belt overlay, as well as the par restricted parking district. And then the neighborhood plan for this area is the 2001 Columbia Point Master Plan. Next slide, please. I'm pleased to report that uh, 
the zoning is something that I had previously worked on uh, two years ago. I presented to this body the amendment that created this uh, Columbia Morrissey Community Commercial Subdistrict because, as I had mentioned at the time, uh, this is a location where uh, PDAs are a great zoning tool uh, for this site and uh, Dorchester Bay City across the street. Accordingly, Section 6528 of the code uh, indicates that uh, community commercial subdistricts such as this one uh, are the only places where PDAs are allowed in Dorchester. Uh, and that was the zoning tool that we used uh, from the start uh, in our review of this project. Uh, in addition uh, to the PDA tool that we uh, used as we were evaluating it, uh, this is compliant with inclusionary development requirements uh, uh, that, that were in place at the time that uh, we were reviewing it, uh, as well as compliant with BTD parking maximums. Next slide, please. Uh, and then in terms of the underlying plan, uh, while uh, as was the case with uh, Bay City across the street, uh, the proposed heights and dimensions are not consistent with the 2011 plan, uh, but 2011 plan heights and dimensions were never encoded in zoning. So staff took the most relevant parts of that plan to be the armature of open space, open spaces and streets that the plan creates. And as the proponents will describe in their subsequent slides, uh, the key elements that were taken from this plan uh, were a north-south main street that connects uh, this part of the neighborhood ultimately up to the JFK UMass T station and um, two passive uh, open spaces. And with that, I will uh, complete the planning slides. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Next slide, please. Uh, this is Lewis Kraft uh, with Stantec Architecture. I'm going to assume that everybody can hear me. I'm joined yes, uh, by uh, Jen Schultz, uh, Sullivan Law, Drive Safe. Jen, uh, and ownership uh, represented by Matt Snyder and Dave Rafferty. Um, as mentioned, uh, this master plan site is located just west of Morrissey Boulevard between Hub 25 and South Line. It's currently an underutilized site with a uh, light commercial, save for the uh, grocery store component, which as mentioned, will remain uh, on site. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, critically, this master plan lies at a juncture uh, adjacent to or very close to JFK UMass and surrounded by existing neighborhoods and uh, newly approved developments, Dorchester Bay City, Hub 25 and South Line, um, and is going to form sort of the, the, the nexus of this new neighborhood character. Next slide, please. Uh, as mentioned uh, by Ted and, and others, um, really the, the planning context for this started in 2011 with the 2011 Columbia Point Master Plan, and it was a testament to the sound uh, planning by the city and the community um, that that vision that was laid out uh, really uh, made a lot of sense to, to bring to the fore today, and the project team has been able to deliver on those uh, key points, uh, mainly being a connection, uh, facilitating a future connection to JFK UMass T through a north-south mixed use uh, development, also creating critical connection uh, across uh, Morrissey Boulevard, and then expanding on some of the open space uh, and, and mobility components. Next slide. And, and those connections that you see here uh, are, are really laid out in, in this slide with the main, sli uh, main spine um, leading from JFK UMass, through Hub 25 and across to the Southline Courtyard, but then also connecting the neighborhoods, Dorchester, Seven Hill, uh, along Morrissey Boulevard and across uh, Morrissey uh, through Bay City at, to the waterfront and, and to those open space connections. But then within the site, there's a critical 1.35 acres uh, of open space, which we'll uh, show you shortly. Next slide. Uh, so here's the master plan as it's envisioned, uh, 1.57 million total uh, GFA space. This is a mixed use pedestrian focused uh, project with seven buildings centered around that main street street spine. But then really what's important is codified uh, is this dedicated four open spaces, um, which you'll see here that will be delivered in every phase of the of the project dedicated in perpetuity and forming the, the backbone of this this new community. Um, next slide. This is a view here of, of that that main street. Um, the, the main street will be resiliency raised. We know that resiliency is a, is a, a major component of, of this neighborhood. And so uh, raising that uh, main street allows for uh, open, 
mixed mixed use um, connections and and the ability for um, a grocery store to be built as part of the development while the existing star market uh, is in place on site so that there's continual grocery service uh, to the neighborhood, which is a critical component of the over 70,000 square feet uh, of retail that's being delivered as part of this master plan. Next slide. Also of importance, the project uh, holds the buildings back from the property line along Morrissey Boulevard to allow for an activation and engagement uh, of Morrissey Boulevard, both in its current state, but then um, being able to connect to the future vision for Morrissey Boulevard with active use entries, a planted buffer zone, and uh, the provisions for, you know, allowing for multimodal uh, bike usage and, and a new parkway experience along Morrissey Boulevard. Next slide. Here you see an, an aerial from the, the southeast uh, looking down onto a, a collection of buildings. It's worth um, mentioning that this is an Article 80C PDA master plan. Each one of these buildings and open spaces will come back to the city, to the public, and, and those input channels um, as part of an Article 80B master plan. So all of these buildings, their articulation um, will be further developed, but you can see the, the centering the, of these buildings around those open spaces, activating and, and enlivening this new neighborhood a character, Building C will be the new grocery store, and the phasing will roughly come online uh, left to right, uh, starting with the two buildings on your left and that A Street connection across Morrissey Boulevard and connecting to the Dorchester Bay City within the Main Street, continuing through the site straight line uh, towards JFK UMass T Station. Next slide. As part of the, the PDA master plan, we developed a, 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 a extensive series of design guidelines in concert with the city, uh, with the community and IAG input. This is just one um, section of those that will govern open space character, height, step backs uh, along Morrissey Boulevard and, and Main Street to really help define the pedestrian character and, and the uh, utility and, and comfort of those open spaces. Next slide, please. Um, this is a ground floor uh, use plan uh, that's conceptual in nature. It's worth noting as, as part of this that this is uh, residential and uh, life science uses. 585 uh, residences are envisioned as part of this master plan with 20% affordable. Um, that's a critical component along with, if you see it, Building B, uh, 7,500 square feet of community open space connecting to, uh, or sorry, a community indoor space that's connected to um, that community park. It's also worth noting that all of the parking uh, is below grade a, a, and service access is moved to the periphery of the site so that we have a, a mixed use pedestrian focused main street spine. Next slide. Uh, this slide just really speaks to um, the thought and care that's been gone into creating uh, individual use and character for each of these four open spaces and that Main Street Sciences spine. So starting on the left, a community park that's focused on, on gathering, connecting to that community space and the Southland Courtyard, a civic plaza uh, that would be at the nexus of, of A Street and Morrissey Boulevard and that connection across Morrissey Bo Boulevard, a family park um, that will have active uses, including play spaces, dog run, um, and, and located next to the project's uh, residential use, and then also Hub 25, and then finally a pocket park um, that will allow for a, a quiet nature focus respite um, as part of this new development. Next slide. We're going to start show you just quickly some conceptual uh, slides. All of these, these open spaces that were shown here um, are going to be uh, further developed, obviously, when these come back for Article 80B to the city um, with uh, input from, from the community, IAG, uh, and also the city as well. Um, this community space will have that spill out space connected to uh, the, the community use, the potential for a, a structure that can serve as the backdrop for a gathering, and also a connection through the site uh, to the existing uh, South Line North Courtyard, creating a continuity of spaces. Next slide. Uh, the, the family park, which is to the north of the site, closest to, to JFK at UMass. Uh, th this is our, our largest space. It's, it's kind of a feature space. Um, you can see here um, that this space will also sort of mitigate the um, resiliency raised center spine uh, 
of, of the site and provide a variety of, of uses, open spaces, access to light, air, uh, and, and community uh, benefits. Next slide. Uh, here's here's that civic plaza space, uh, which provides both open, green, and more formal gathering spaces that will be uh, connected to and visually linked to uh, the grocery store main entrance, which you see um, towards the, the the background of this site and and other retail and and active uses surrounding. Next slide. And this brings you just in a, a little a little bit closer. We're really excited um, with with uh, the level of input that we've gotten from both the city and, and the community here and that uh, the, this project can can bring both well needed housing and jobs uh, to this to this area forming the backbone of a of a new community and connecting to uh, existing communities. So with that, um, we offer our thanks from the project team. Thank you, Louis. If somebody could take the presentation down. All right, any questions or comments from the commission? Quiet group today. Uh, any public testimony, Jeff? I guess, uh, uh, Jay, just my only comment is just like the Dorchester Bay project, I sincerely hope that uh, the MBTA catches up with these visionary plans <laughs> so that uh, they can provide uh, adequate and uh, 21st century transportation, uh, which I think is currently lacking. So I'm supportive, but uh, I really hope that the MBTA gets their shit together. And that's French. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, all right. Sorry about laughing. Uh, any public Anybody testimony? Would you like to testify on this uh, hearing, please? Uh, signify by raising your hand, please. Quiet in the public sector, too. Nothing. Okay. At this point, we'll close out this portion of the hearing and enter our business session. Questions, comments, motions? I guess I would just comment, um, Jay, that each of the component parts of this, as, as the proponent has said, will come back through process. Um, I actually think that their preliminary PDA plan is quite developed. So I hope that that gives um, uh, you know, some runway to this to move. I, I think in the presentation, it said 25, 26 was their kind of first phase um, to start. But in any event, I thought the material was very good and this concept is very well developed. So um, I, you know, I know we will see these phases as they come through, and I hope that they come through sooner rather than later. Um, I'll make a motion. <clears throat> I can make a motion to approve map amendment uh, application number 769, master plan for plan development area number 146, Columbia Point Crossing, map 5A, 5B, Dorchester Neighborhood District. Second. second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call. Jill Hatton? Yes. Michael Nichols? Yes. Michael DeMella? Yes. Nelson Arroyo? Yes. David Ma? Yes. Aisha Miller? Yes. Ricardo Ostrich? Yes. And I vote yes. That's eight nothing. Congratulations. Good luck. Very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, everybody. Uh, 9.30 public hearing. This is a hearing before the Boston Zoning Commission to consider a petition for the approval of MAP Amendment Application Number 771 and a petition for the approval of the Plan Development Area Number 145, 415 Newbury Street, Back Bay. The hearing was duly advertised on December 21st, 2023 in the Boston Herald. In the Boston Zoning Commission hearing on petitions, the proponent will first present their case and the subject to questioning by members of the commission only. We are taking support and opposition at the same time. If you are planning to testify, please take the time to verify your computer microphone is active. Click the hand icon in your Zoom control panel. This will signal staff you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, your hand icon will be blue. If you are calling into the meeting and like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for public testimony, a member of the commission, 
a member of the staff will announce your name and allow you to speak. You must unmute your microphone. Your webcam will not be active. Please give your full name, any group affiliation, announce whether you support or oppose the petition. Each speaker will be allowed up to two minutes. If necessary, I will advise you when you have 30 seconds remaining. At that time, please summarize your remarks from the meeting and continue when others may be heard. Finally, the proponents will allow a brief five to 10 minute period for rebuttal if they so desire. Please begin the presentation. Thank you and uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Good morning. My name is Sarah Peck. I'm a senior project manager in the development review department. Um, we're here before you this morning to discuss the proposed development plan for plan development area number 145, 415 Newbury Street and the associated 415 Newbury Street project. The 415 Newbury Street PDA development plan is located on a 1.1 acre site at 374 Commonwealth Avenue containing the existing Harvard Club of Boston building, 415 Newbury Street and a portion of 380 Commonwealth Avenue in the Back Bay neighborhood of Boston. The development plan envisions the construction of two new buildings containing approximately 133 residential units, residential amenities and new Harvard Club facilities within approximately 157,000 square feet of new building space together with up to 125 off-street managed vehicle parking spaces exclusively for the Harvard Club and events. Of the 133 residential units, approximately 38 will be home ownership units located in the three-story building, and 95 units will be residential rental units located in the 11-story building. 23 units, or approximately 17% of the total number of units of the proposed project will be created as IDP home ownership units within the three-story building. The development team filed their project notification form on January 19th, 2022, followed by a supplemental information filing on February 17th, 2023. The development team then filed a draft plan development area development plan on August 16th, 2023. The BPA hosted four public meetings and four IEG meetings between March 2022 and October 2023 to review the project and the PDA development plan. These meetings were advertised in the local news, neighborhood newspapers, posted in the BPDA's calendar, and an email notification was sent to all subscribers of the BPDA's Back Bay neighborhood updates. The proposed project received approval from the Boston Civic Design Commission on October 3rd, 2023, and the BPDA board granted their approval on December 14th, 2023. At this point, I would like to hand it off to my colleague, Ted, once again, from the planning department to present the planning context for the project, followed by a presentation from the development team. Thank you all. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is the proposal that I worked on as planner since its inception with us at the BPDA in 2019. Um, I'll give you two slides on the planning and zoning context that informed our review. This site sits in two different uh, zoning districts in the base code. So the right side uh, on this map along Mass Ave is in a B8-120, uh, so uh, business maximum FAR8, maximum height 120 feet. And then the left or westerly portion is in H365 uh, housing district max FAR3, <coughs> max height 65 feet. There are no recent local planning initiatives for this site. In subsequent slides by the proponents, you'll see images and renderings showing an adjacent project on the other side of Newbury Street uh, that is a turnpike air rights parcel. But that turnpike air rights parcel across the street is a much different planning context, uh, one that's predicated on extra height in exchange for the provision of public realm over the highway right of way, which is not the case here. Uh, this project is all built on terra firma. Um, in terms of the neighborhood context, it's very close to MBTA subway and bus service. Uh, the current uh, use of most of the site is surface parking. And the reason why uh, one site lives in two different zoning districts is that this is where uh, the Back Bay Street Network, which was filled in first, meets the Fenway Street Network, which was filled in uh, subsequently and uh, hits that two grid those grids at an angle. And so the zoning boundary follows the alignment of Mass Ave, as you can see on this map, uh, and collides at an angle with uh, the parcelization, which is following the Newbury Street uh, um, network. Uh, next and final slide from planning, please. Uh, in terms of what these two zoning districts mean for their dimensions, uh, on the easterly portion along Mass Ave, uh, they have uh, maxed out their height. So uh, their proposed uh, 
at 120 feet, which is exactly uh, what the underlying zoning allows. Uh, it's a little bit harder to calculate the FAR uh, because the zoning for this part of the site allows up to eight, uh, but taking the average for their whole site, uh, they're at 4.6. Uh, and then I wanna also point out that they have not maximized uh, the zoning envelope on the westerly portion where housing is allowed. Uh, so uh, maximum height allowed by the underlying zoning is 65 feet. And the proposal you'll see on uh, subsequent slides is for 36 feet uh, or 30 or three stories. Uh, in any case, um, we in the planning department are thrilled to see land that's currently used uh, as surface parking for additional housing. And this is very consistent with the housing plan, uh, housing and changing city, as well as the citywide transportation plan, Go Boston 2030. Uh, and in addition, uh, this is compliant with the transportation department's parking maximums. And with that, I've completed the zoning and planning section. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. My name is Abby Goldenbarb and I am a vice president of development at Trinity Financial. Trinity com commenced the community process in 2019 after being designated by the Harvard Club of Boston. The program and design that we submitted to the Harvard Club was for replacement amenity space and parking for the Harvard Club and the addition of a 200 room hotel. The proposed massing and design is a single six to eight story building across the site. In the fall of 2019, we engaged the Back Bay community in a series of meetings and learned that a hotel was a use that would not be acceptable to the community. We heard vehement concerns from abutters who own homes overlooking the site and own nearby commercial properties. We then began a series of meetings to reimagine the plan. We held over 40 meetings with individuals and groups on site and in people's homes before even filing our letter of intent with the BPDA in 2021. We drastically changed the building's program and massing in response to the neighbors with whom we met. The plans that Dan Gellermini from CBT will show you are the result of four years of listening to that feedback and responding to it in a way that we are confident will benefit the public with 133 new homes, including 23 affordable for sale condominiums in a neighborhood that currently only has six inclusionary development condominiums. This development will elevate the public realm of Newbury Street extension to the stature of the balance of Newbury Street and create a more inclusive and diverse neighborhood of Boston. I'll now turn it over to my colleague at CPT. Thanks, Abby. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dan from CBT. I'll be continuing the presentation. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Uh, starting with our site location, we're located at 415 Newbury Street. To the left is Charles Gate East. To the right is Mass Ave. And to the north is, is Com Ave. Our buildings are indicated by those, those yellow blocks in the center of the site, in the center of the slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, here's some site context views. So our site currently is um, a open air surface parking lot. Um, it does contain a driveway that uh, is used by the buildings on Com Ave uh, to provide access to the rear of the buildings. And there's also a large windowless masonry volume that houses squash courts for the Harvard Club that's slated for demolition. Uh, next slide. So this is our first floor plan um, overlaid on the site, starting with the blue block in the top right. That's the Harvard Club, which is existing to remain. And just south of that is where we're proposing the 11-story mixed-use building. Uh, that mixed use is comprised of Harvard Club facilities as well as uh, residential rental units. Uh, moving to the left of the, the slide is that existing driveway that's protected via an easement. And to the left of that driveway is a three-story uh, condominium building. Next slide. Uh, this is a view of the uh, proposed buildings uh, elevation within its context showing uh, site improvements as well as the new proposed street trees along our site. Next slide. And this is a site longitudinal section showing the programmatic organization of the building. So the 11 story building on the right, um, Harvard Club occupies the basement, first floor, second and third floor. The rest of the building is uh, residential rentals. And then to the left is our three story condominium building, which is 100% residential over a below grade parking garage. Uh, next slide. This is a site cross section of our 11 story building showing the relationship to the existing Harvard Club, as well as parcel 12, which is shown on the right. 
Um, the parcel 12 isn't exactly across from our 11 story building, but does cover part of our site, which we'll see in our next slide. This is an aerial view of the site with parcel 12 in the foreground. It shows the cascading effect as we transition to the historic district of Back Bay in the background. Next slide. And getting a little closer to our 11 story building, uh, we're proposing a glassy inviting base, which provides access to residential and Harvard Club facilities on Newbury Street, which will activate the sidewalk. Uh, as we move up the building, we're proposing a uh, brick facade with cast stone accents, and finally a light and airy crown at the top of the building. Uh, next slide. This is a view of our three-story building. We've activated the streetscape by providing a vibrant corner entrance, which serves the second and third floor units, uh, as well as six at-grade units, which are directly accessible from the sidewalk. Uh, we have an A-B rhythm to the facade, which is a nod to the scale and architecture uh, east of Mass Ave on Newbury Street. And then one last thing I'll mention, uh, we've also recessed 90% uh, of the facades in the three-story and 11-story building to provide um, an additional width to the public realm, as well as incorporating planters with uh, landscape elements. Um, next slide. And then some views from the historic district. So starting at the top left, this is a view uh, west of the Harvard Club site, looking towards our site. As you can see, uh, the top of our building is visible over the 382 Comat building. Um, moving to the top right, that's a, a view from across Com Ave, looking directly at the Harvard Club. Uh, the crown of the 11 story building is visible over the um, existing Harvard Club. Uh, moving to the bottom left, uh, that's a view east of Mass Ave on Com Ave, looking towards the site. Um, the Elliott Hotel does conceal the view of our 11 story building from this perspective. And then finally, going full circle, bottom right is uh, us standing at uh, Newbury Street in Mass Ave, looking west. You can see parcel 12 on the left, as well as our building's uh, crown over the existing room and board building. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to David Linhart to talk a little bit about uh, PDA. Next slide. Good morning, commissioners. David Linhart, Coulson and Stores uh, with the project team. And we want to spend just a little bit of time on the rationale behind using a PDA zone relief mechanism here. Um, the, the site is PDA eligible um, and and meets the one acre threshold. So um, so be, beyond that, I, I thanks to Ted actually for setting up earlier some of the zoning complexity, and that's what um, you know the PDA helps to resolve some of that. The the site is bifurcated diagonally, uh, you know, business zoning on one side, residential on the other side. That that uh, zoning transition actually cuts right through the existing Harvard Club building floor plate through the proposed 11 story building floor plate. So, um, you know, being able to, to really treat the, the whole site as one zoning lot uh, with, with uh, one zoning overlay, that's helpful. Uh, we, we also, given that the, the site, it involves an existing building that'll stay, the Harvard Club, and then two new buildings that, that all together operate as a campus. Again, the, the PDA helps to uh, resolve that complexity and, uh, something that we emphasized during the, the the public process, and worth mentioning again, there was a lot of attention to the program itself, getting the right program, getting the right design, and then uh, you know wrap around zoning relief that makes sense to, uh, to deliver that. Uh, as, as also as Ted mentioned earlier, we were not trying to max out height density on the site uh, based on the underlying FAR. There, there is actually, you know, sort of leaving gross floor area on the table uh, that would be available just based on the underlying zoning. Uh, the heights not going above 120 uh, for the 11 story building coming in below the 65 foot height limit uh, that otherwise would apply uh, where the three story building is. So again, the approach was get the right project, get the right design, and then um, wrap the zoning leaf around that, but, but don't try to, to maximize bulk uh, on the site. And uh, we also uh, paid attention to public benefits. And uh, Abby can talk more about that. Thanks, David. <laughs> hey, next slide, please. So as I mentioned earlier, we have 133 units of housing, including on-site mixed income homeownership housing. This includes 23 on-site affordable units, again, in a neighborhood which today only has six inclusionary home ownership units. Uh, we are talking with the city and have an affirmative furthering fair housing plan to um, make the demonstration um, 
a development initiative designed to address the racial wealth gap in Boston. We're going to be um, talking to mass housing in the city about ways we can confront that. Uh, we do have um, a number of um, public realm improvements, including pub, um, pedestrian lighting, landscaping, and street trees. Also work for offsite improvements will be done um, to really green Newbury Street in the way it needs. It needs. Uh, we have made a number of um, multimodal transportation improvements, $75,000 towards a blue bike station and creating um, traffic calming speed humps on nurse Newberry Street and uh, three spaces in front of the building for on street loading for other properties on Newberry Street as well. So we are um, excited to be here at this point uh, in time after many years of hard work and thank you for your uh, time and review. Thank you, Abby. Did uh, someone take the presentation down? Or? Thank you. Questions, comments from the commission? Wow. Uh, any public testimony, Jeff? Uh, yes, there are a few hands raised, Mr. Chairman, so we'll call them in order. Uh, Justin, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here today. I represent Kensington Investment Company. We are a, an abutter. Um, we are opposed, although we are trying to work on a resolution with Trinity at this time to move forward. Um, we are opposed because we don't think this is appropriate for a PDA. Uh, if you listen to the first two uh, presentations today, the first one has the Billy McGonagall Community Center and $15 million for new open improvements. The second one was situated on nine acres with 1.35 acres dedicated to park space. We didn't hear that today for the presentation we heard just now for the Harvard Club. Um, affordable housing is not a public benefit, it's a requirement to build. Um, you know, in this affordable housing, all of the affordable housing is in one three story building. Um, and Again, that that's that's not a benefit. That's a requirement to building here. Um, we just not uh, we're just not hearing that a PDA is appropriate. Again, a PDA is a zoning district that establishes special zoning controls for large or complex projects. Um, that's from the BPDA website. A PDA, you, you know, the BRA policy since 2014 is that a PDA must be a complex project provide for numerous uses appropriate for the immediate area and neighborhood. We don't think this is complex, does not provide for numerous uses, and is inappropriate for a PDA. They're not intended, nor should they be used as a mechanism to avoid the Zoning Board of Appeal. As a city councilor, even Mayor Wu released a report critical of the use of PDA, saying developers can flout the underlying zoning code through a haphazard process and promote speculation by developers who aim to leverage influence. Furthermore, on July 12, 2022, the BPDA communicated that this project specifically was inappropriate for a PDA. And the proponent had not clearly articulated how the project furthers neighborhood planning goals. Um, again, we don't think that this offers the public benefits and for the immediate area and surrounding neighborhood. And that's what a PDA should do. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Okay, next, uh, Chris Tracy. Go ahead, Chris. Thanks. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Good morning, Chairman Hurley and members of the commission. Thank you all for your service to the city of Boston. My name is Chris Tracy. I'm a vice president at O'Neill and Associates with a business address of 18 Tremont Street in Boston. My clients are the Elliott Hotel and Kensington Investment Company, two longstanding stakeholders and institutions of the special little historic corner in the city of Boston. Um, I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to echo Justin's comments and that they are working with Trinity and trying to reach a, res a resolution, but at this time they are not there. So I also rise in opposition to this PDA. A PDA has never been granted in this historic district of the, of the Back Bay. We believe this is a wildly inappropriate uh, use of such a powerful zoning tool that this board uh, can wield. You heard two sites earlier tonight, uh, earlier this morning, that we thought were completely appropriate uses. The McCormick uh, Housing Project in South Boston, 
Over a thousand residents of the city of Boston live in those buildings. It's imperative that they get remade. That's a very important uh, and, and critical project that needed a PDA. We completely agree with that. Also, the Billy McGonigal Community Center will provide robust community benefits. That couldn't couldn't be a more um, better model for what a PDA is. Also, the site on Morrissey Boulevard, again, a massive complex site that warrants and requires such a powerful zoning tool. We believe this is quite the opposite. We're talking about 133 units of housing in the revamp of a private social club. Looking closer to the back bay, just a few blocks away, you have the Prudential Center. The Pru is, again, a completely appropriate use. Such a massive site. Uh, this is simply not that. A key tenant of PDAs is robust seconds, community please. benefits. We believe they don't have it here. IDP is a requirement, not a community benefit. Uh, we believe this flies in the face of the new community planning that our mayor and director Jameson strive for the city of Austin. We respectfully ask the commission to either deny or table this matter. We think this should go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. We think that's more appropriate. We are opposed to the PDA. Thank you all for your time. Thanks, Chris. Okay, next. Sean Regan. Sean, go ahead. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Sean Regan. I am an attorney representing the Windsor Place Condominium Trust, which consists of 92 residential units and 14 commercial units and is a direct abutter to the rear of the three-story structure located at uh, 390 Commonwealth Ave. Throughout this process, the proponent has engaged in significant constructive discussions with residents and as a result has made significant project changes to address residents' concerns and preserve our building's unique features. We believe the two buildings with varying heights provide a unique look which is quintessentially Boston and protects current residents. Given the complex zoning of the site and the appropriateness of the project for the site, we wholeheartedly support the use of a PDA, which will provide additional protection and stability for future residents. Most importantly, Trinity has spent significant time, energy, and resources to understand and address residents' concerns. The re this result represents what can occur through proper neighborhood outreach and should be an example for developers and the city. For these reasons, Windsor Place Condominium Trust, on behalf of its 92 direct residential abutters and 14 seconds, commercial Sorry. units, offer our support for the project and encourage the commission to approve the PDA to lock in and codify this zoning uh, in the um, interest of residents. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Okay, next is Jackie Yesian. Jackie, go ahead. Hello. Uh, good morning, uh, commissioners. Morning, I'm Jackie. speaking as the chair of the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay Development Committee. We review um, large scale projects. Uh, along with our neighbors in the Back Bay. And we do outreach to encourage people in the community to participate in major pro anything, really. Uh, I just would like to say the residential and commercial members of our community have worked very hard with the BPDA, BRA, to develop zoning that has worked to make this a thriving, interesting, and successful neighborhood for residents, businesses, and events one of the most important economic engines in the city of Boston and a destination for visitors from around the nation and the world. There's never been a PDA requested or approved in the Back Bay Historic District. This is in the Back Bay Historic District. There are many positive attributes to this project. So we like the project, we don't like the PDA. So we would suggest that you maybe table it or do something so that you don't approve a PDA here. For one thing, the, the zoning of uh, the choice of an acre is really not accurate, I don't think. I would not count this as an acre. It includes a building that is not really part of the project. Um, 30 seconds, Jack. Okay. 
And as you know, using a PDA to avoid legal appeals is an inappropriate justification for a development process. So we strongly suspect that's a uh, motivation here. So we support the use of a zoning variance because it's 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 clear, maybe two or three sentences, and you'd have your variance. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Hey, Martin, go ahead. Thank you, uh, commissioners, for the opportunity to uh, give testimony on, on this project. Um, my name is Martin Rett. I live in the Back Bay. I'm chair of the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay, and I could say that supporting what my colleague Jackie Yesin has said, we've had extensive discussions not only involving the, uh, the development committee within NAB uh, about this project, and actually we've been very impressed with what the proponent uh, has agreed to do and the way in which they reached out to the community. But the sticking point, quite frankly, is the PDA. And this sets, uh, if, if this PDA is granted, it sets a very dangerous precedent because uh, I agree with those who have testified that the justification for a PDA is simply not there. Uh, there's been an artifice employed to meet the minimum one acre requirement and the project, while I don't say it's trivial by any means, is, doesn't certainly rise to the level of complexity of other projects. And we're very concerned about the use of a PDA in the historic district of the Back Bay. What kind of a precedent that this might, this might set? Um, and we understand why uh, this is being proposed. And it also opens the door to who knows what will happen down the road with the PDA. It's described as a transparent zoning mechanism, which is a funny word to use in this context, transparent, because in fact, it's entirely up to the owner of the project or the developer and the BPDA then to decide whether or not something that they may want to do down the road. In 30 fact, seconds, man. Be approved. So again, you know, the project's great, but please approve it, not with a PDA, but through using the standard zoning process, variance process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Those are all the raised hands I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, hold on. Okay. Nope. Yeah, that's it. Nope. <laughs> Pam Beal. Go ahead, Pam. Hey there, Dan. Go ahead, Pam. Hello. Hello. Okay. Pam. We can hear you now. I'll start again. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. My name is Pam Beale, and I'm a member of the IAG for this project. And I'm here to indicate my strong support for this, this development. Trinity Financial is engaged with the community, listened to the issues, and, and has proposed a wonderful transit-oriented residential development that will create much needed affordable housing in the Back Bay neighborhood. Lastly, I also believe that the benefits and mitigation benefits that this project will bring to this end of Newbury Street does warrant the use of a PDA. Accordingly, I urge you to approve this project this morning and thank you for your time. Thank you, Pam. Is that it, Jeff? That is it. Thank you. Okay. We'll close out this portion of the hearing and enter our business session. Questions, comments, motions? Um, Jay, I, I just want to comment that I think um, Sean Reagan noted that when the Windsor condominium included 92 units, um, which, I, you know, I, I, I take that to mean that if if even half of those residents supported it and they could overall represent, but if they all supported it, which is, I think what he said, that's a fairly significant amount of uh, support um, as well as an a a IAG support. So um, I, I hear the, uh, the comments on the use of a PDA and as a commissioner, I would, I would want to just put on the table that just because there might be one PDA, <clears throat> that's approved. It doesn't set a precedent. It's 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 all project specific, and um, so I just wanted to make those comments because that's what I was thinking as I listened to the comments from the public. Yeah, Jill, uh, Michael Nichols, I would echo that. I mean, I the the 
some of the, the stranger opposition we've gotten today, folks saying that they are supportive of the project, but don't like the device being used. We heard a presentation from the BPDA that it's an appropriate device to use in the context of opposition to the project that was expressed, especially by the initial two attorneys, other than a passing reference to a perception of insufficient community benefits, there was no, no rationale provided for why the project is, is inappropriate or out of scale with, with the neighborhood. So it, it appears that there is, is broad alignment around um, you know, the project being good for the neighborhood and I'm supportive. Anybody else? Mr. Chair, I would make a motion that we approve map amendment application number 771, development plan for plan development area number 145, 415 Newbury Street, Back Bay, map one, Boston proper. Second. second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? Carrie Nama, lower roll call. Jill Hatton? Yes. Michael Nichols? Yes. Michael DeMella? Yes. Nelson Arroyo? Yes. David Ma. Yes. Uh, Isha Miller. Yes. Ricardo Ostrich. Yes. I vote yes. That's eight nothing. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Jeff, next meeting. Next meeting is February 14th. I will uh, not be here, Jeff. Okay. I am, I'll be en route driving from Florida back to Boston. Oh, boo hoo. So, uh, probably massively hungover. <laughs> <clears throat>